Well, my next guest was invited to the celebrations today, he received an invitation to a reception on a Friday afternoon, this afternoon at 10 Downing Street, to mark the 70th anniversary of Windrush. But he turned down the invitation and he joins me live in the studio. Very, very nice to see you. Professor Gus John is here. Welcome to BBC Radio London. Why did you turn down the invitation? Well, I thought <clears throat> it was a regal cheek on the part of Theresa May to send that invitation around to anybody, frankly, given what she has been responsible for. Um, you had the clip from the gentleman from Grenada, mm -hmm. for example. Very many more people. I have interviewed in the last month three different people, one suffering from leukemia, one from prostate cancer, one suffering from emphysema, who have been denied treatment because of this hostile environment regime that Theresa May has brought in. And <clears throat> the fact of the matter is, it has put people's lives at risk. Uh, to be over 65 and be put in a Yarlwood detention center, having worked all your life as, as a law-abiding citizen in this country, is brutal. Now, this country, as you well know, calls out all kinds of other nations for human rights violations, for all sorts of stuff. Um, anybody would believe that goodness was made in Britain. Mm. Um, and, and so that conduct, it seems to me, is so utterly reprehensible that nobody should be going to Downing Street to drink wine and eat cheese with Theresa May. What about going to Westminster to pray <clears throat> alongside Theresa May and Jeremy Corbyn today? Well, well, is that, that the right thing to do? It's not the right thing to do, and, and for many reasons. You see, part of the problem with this whole Windrush business is that it, is, it will go down in history, and it would be a distorted history. Because prior to people coming here in 1948, there was a black presence in the country. Mm. And many of those people were struggling against racism and trying to get the British government to understand that its legacy, its empire legacy, made it imperative that it address the issue of racism, mm -hmm. not just so that black people could feel more comfortable, but so that white people could understand themselves in relation to the black world. I now, they didn't do any, anything of the sort. So to suggest that 1948 and the arrival of the Windrush marks, if you like, the new black presence in Britain is historically wrong. Mm -hmm. And it's distorting the relationship between us and Britain. I, I understand that, but 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 could it be said? I mean, you know, the technicalities of, of 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 exact history and exact you know depiction of what happened. Could it be said that it's symbolic Windrush rather than that the accurate start of the very first Black presence in Britain? We all know it's not really that. I think everybody knows that by now. But but it it symbolises something. It symbolises the arrival of people of a certain kind lots had fought in the british forces during the war it was by invitation people were requested to come yes nevertheless it was expensive to come 28 pounds in those days over a thousand pounds now people scrimped and saved to be mm -hmm. able to get here by invitation and here they all were isn't that symbolic of something therefore it's an anniversary worth uh, acknowledging and even celebrating because it symbolizes so very much for so many people well <clears throat> by the same token all the stuff about what has happened to that generation, mm -hmm. their children, the fact that we populate the prisons more than anybody else, we are, we are excluded from schools more than anybody else, the fact that immigration laws have consistently conflated race and immigration to the extent that people generally can't conceive of black people as British settlers. My children were born here. My grandchildren were born here. But they're still considered to be ethnic minorities and different and alien. So Britishness is not seen as applying to them. Now, you've got to fix all of that stuff before you go praying and, and asking God to, 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 to thank people for coming here. I mean, you know, all of that stuff is a huge thing to begin to even consider to solve, isn't it? And even to consider it's a, it's a problem with an answer or a solution, even with the greatest desire for peace and harmony. But one thing that needs instant solving, one thing that has to be dealt with immediately, surely, is this latest scandal where we I mean, I, I had a call. A don't know if you heard my caller, Leighton. Did you hear him? Poor gentleman. He, he said, he said, I feel so alone. I'm so alone. Yes, he yes. said, I, he said, I phoned that helpline number. I 
phoned it. You know, they don't help me. I can't, they don't they don't tell me what to do. I don't know what to do. Yes. All they say to me is something's got to go through Parliament, he said, and it yes. hasn't gone through yes. yet. Yes. So they can't no. help me. He's stuck. He hasn't got a passport. He's in a real estate. My, my, my guest in the studio, Cecil, yes. you know, who's in, sleeping in a shelter. The no. shelter had to be organised for him by his solicitor. He's worked all his life here. He's got six children. Well, that that is what the British public should understand. And that is what makes the whole business of uh, going to Westminster Abbey, going to the Prime Minister's uh, Downing Street place, so vile. It is, it is frankly immoral that the state should be organising those things while at the same time people are suffering in the manner that your guests have described. You might really say that the people who should be invited to Downing Street and, and also put up in some sumptuous hotel are the people who've suffered absolutely. loss of home, loss no, of no, earnings, absolutely. rather than other people having a vol a canapé to celebrate. Precisely. It's not, 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 not the right thing. It's interesting to, to, I think, to people listening, I don't know what you think, um, uh, Professor, but many of the people from the general, general, the Windrush generation to whom we've spoken, whose lives have been turned upside down yes. through absolutely no fault of their own, they don't express the the anger that you do. They, they don't say, it's not fair and it's disgusting. They don't say that. And they say, oh, well, you know, it's in the hands of God and whatever happens, happens. I don't some, know if it, some say well, that. Well, the, 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 the people that we've spoken to, I, I, I've i asked everyone all morning, do you think it's right that there's a service at Westminster Abbey? Do you think it's right that the Prime Minister's attending? And, and, and the people that I've spoken to, they just say, well, you know, they don't say no, not mm. like you. Mm. Why do you think that is? Well, I think largely because people have come to to believe that the state is acting benignly and that these things are just aberrations. Uh-huh. They, they are not aberrations. They are part of the, of the web and weave of the way that the, the, the nation has chosen to deal with issues of, 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 of immigration. You, you don't I mean, feel that the Windrush scandal is a result of changes which applied and nobody realised they'd apply to this particular Windrush generation, that it was an accident, an oversight. You think it was deliberate? I you? think it was deliberate. Well, let me give you an example. Yes. Um, you know that the, the government uh, destroyed landing cards yes. in 2010. Those landing cards would have assisted the government mm. in identifying the people who came when they did. Mm. Many children came with people who were not their immediate relatives or parents. Uh, adults would come, they would save money, they would then send for the children to join them. Yes. Some of those children came as accompanied by, by, by strangers, really. Mm-hmm. And they, they were on those strangers' passports. Now... If their own parents, their biological parents, did not set about correcting all of that and putting their their proper documents in place, Mm. they would have remained undocumented most of their lives. Yes. And they had no cause to worry because they were here legally. I know. And, and one, of the, one of the things that people have said to, to us on the programme, and after all, my Eddie Nestor, my colleague, we've all been yes. dealing with this story as much as we possibly can and making it mm. as prominent here at Radio London as we possibly can with, with you know, with as much force of personality and heart as, yes. we, as we can muster about this. Because, I mean, I, I just can't get over still a lady who, who just said, I love my Peckham. I love my London. It was mm. just like absolutely heartbreaking, really. And, um, uh, and, 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 uh, uh, what, 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 what seems absolutely remarkable is that people say, well, I was at this school. This yes. is the school I went to. And the gentleman today, Cecil Hayes, he said, but I worked for 50 years. He said, why don't they just look at my national insurance yes, record? Exactly. I've been paying national insurance yeah, exactly. on the books, totally yes, kosher, absolutely. for 50 years. Absolutely. Why don't they just look at that? And, and even if they don't have the landing card um, piece of paper, why haven't they been able to easily ascertain mm, mm, that these people mm, have been here all their mm. lives? and never? But don't you think there's this, I don't know whether you agree, but the, this... The, the, the thought that no one in Westminster really realised that there are adults living in London in 2018 who have never been abroad. They yes. don't go abroad. <laughs> and nobody realised that. But, well, indeed. But you see, they don't care. That's the point. They do not care. And they do not care because the political agenda is let us be seen to be doing something about immigration. Mm. They allowed Nigel Farage and UKIP to set the agenda that agenda was taken forward in the Brexit vote. And in spite of the fact that Joe Cox was murdered one week before that vote, everybody behaved as if, well, you know, these things happen. But, but fundamentally, at the heart of it all, were the messages being sent out to racists and neo-fascists about immigration and immigrants. And the state has got to own that responsibility. 
Thank you very much indeed for coming in. I know your time is very short today. You're giving you. interviews all over the place. So thank you very much indeed for coming in. And, and I just want a final question. You said, no, thank you. I don't want to come. I'm not coming to a reception to celebrate this. I wouldn't want to celebrate this with you. It's not right yes. to Theresa May, to the government. Did, they, did you get any response to that? No response whatsoever. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. That's Professor Gus John, who's turned down, and you hear his reasons, an invitation to the Windrush anniversary celebrations.